Okay, hello and welcome to another video of repairing a Commodore 64. Now this is a different Commodore 64, um, inspired by repairing Barry's black screen of death. Uh, I thought I'd go and grab my own one. And uh, so yeah, I found this on eBay and it does power up, but it gives a garbage screen. Um, now looking through troubleshooting manuals, uh, it tends to point towards a RAM defect. So we're going to open this up and have a look at the RAM. We're going to try swapping some of the RAM chips around, see if that changes anything and then I've got some replacement RAM that we're going to start sticking in um, and see if that actually does anything. So that's the plan for today. So we're going to flip this over and start opening it up. So it's the same as always, um, just three screws on the bottom here. Now I have actually opened this up before um, and then put it back together again because this is the... why is that not sticking? My thing's demagnetized. Okay, so how to remagnetize a screwdriver. Take a strong magnet and do that a few times. And then you'll find that it should remagnetize, which is very handy. But anyway, I digress. I've opened up this Commodore 64 before <clears throat> and uh, taken out the VIC chip to test in the other Commodore 64 that I was repairing. That's how I found out um, that the VIC chip <laughs> was actually working in this one. So I know the VIC chip's fine. Um, and yeah, so we use that one to get the fault of the other Commodore 64. Now, right, let me find a little... Well, I'll just pop them over here on this other bench so they're in a safe place, right? Flip this back over again and turned on shift lock, let's turn that off, and we can open up this Commodore 64. Now you can see in here, like I said, I've already opened it up before, um, and I've already heat synced these chips. So we've got, uh, which one's this one? I think this one's the PLA, this is the SID chip, there's the CPU, and this is the VIC. So I've already put heat sinks on there. Uh, there was a dodgy socket over here on one of the RAM chips, um, so I took that out and put a new one in. I also repaired a trace on the bottom which I will show you in just a moment. And so I did actually remove all of the RAM chips and then I forgot which order they were supposed to go back in. So I just put them in a random order. And I got a different garbage screen. So it does kind of indicate that there is a RAM fault. So let's just take the motherboard out completely. There's another screw here. So the reason why I've added heat sinks to all these chips is because these are the chips that generally tend to get hot inside the Commodore 64. Um, and that's part of normal operation. Uh, sometimes... Uh, which screw am I taking out here? <laughs> this one. So I'm taking out the screws that hold the motherboard together, not necessarily the screws that hold this plate in. So I want to keep that plate on there for now. So yeah, they normally get hot under normal operation from what I found out. Um, so adding a heat sink on there kind of extends their life because quite often when they overheat, that's when they'll start to uh, fail. Um, then you end up with chips that are no good. So let's just move the keyboard out of the way and put that next to my air purifier down here. And let's lift out the motherboard. Right, there we go. We have a lovely motherboard there and a case which I will put next to the keyboard. Right, so here we go then. What we've got is we've got all the RAM chips are here. Okay, we've also got some logic chips. We might replace those if none of this works. And I did buy, straight from China, some replacement RAM chips. Now I'm hoping that <laughs> these aren't faulty chips. They shouldn't be, um, but they weren't particularly expensive. Let me get my box of chips out. Uh, that's computer RAM. Here we go. So we have a little bundle of RAM chips. I need a little knife to open this up because they've actually sealed it in slightly the wrong place. Okay, they, they should have kind of sealed it here. And then I could have just peeled this off here, but uh, they've sealed it in the wrong place. So I'm going to need a knife to open this up. Let's just put a hole in there. Lovely. Done. 
Right, so out comes the RAM. And the RAM is actually contained inside a little bit of cling film as well. Wonderful. There we go. So we should have five, five RAM chips there, because I don't think all eight of these have gone. I think it's only one or maybe even two that have died. So I think five should be enough to fix this. Okay. So here's what we're going to do then. We're going to try and uh, fix these up. And to do that, I'm going to pull all these chips out in this order and make a little sheet over here so that I can remember which one's which. And I'm going to try and put them back in a different order. All right, okay then. So I'm going to pull these ones out first. Uh, these are MT4264 chips. Um, so if I just pull them straight up. So we've got one there. And we're going to pull this one out as well. Okay, so that's the RAM chips pulled out. A bit of a farce there because I've got the tripod um, right in front of the motherboard. So it's a little bit tricky to get some of the parts um, out. All right, so that's what we've got. I've got my little um, layout here, just to the left, out, out, just off, off the camera screen. Uh, so we're looking at right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and put these back. Um, so I'm gonna put the bottom row on the top and um, so what was here is gonna go here and what was here is gonna go here and it's gonna go back to front. So I'm gonna completely reverse everything round um, and see if that makes any difference. Let's just plug this into here then. Grab the power cable. Now I'm using the power supply from the known good Commodore 64. So let's just plug that into the well, plug that into the side here. Lovely. And I'm gonna power on. And let's see what I get on the screen. Okay, I actually get a completely different garbage screen than I got before. So definitely there is a RAM chip gone awry. So what I'm going to do now then, is I'm going to take them out one at a time. And when I take one out, I'm going to replace it with a new one. And then I'm going to try and power it on. And if that uh, fixes it, then we found which one was faulty. If that doesn't fix it, then I'll put the original one back in and move on to the next one. Okay? Right. So, let's do that then. Ooh, now we are close. Right, okay, so I'm just gonna take you on a ride here. And when I turn it on, this happens. Excuse, excuse the flickering. But can you see there? Commodore Bar, Commodore Re 64 Bar System, 38911 Basic Bytes. Oh, sorry, I'm touching the microphone. So you can see there when it turns on, We've got it right, but it's kind of doubled up with what it's saying there. It makes me think that there might be another problem with this, which is interesting. Okay, I'm gonna try turning it on and run it with a cartridge in and see if that does anything. Let's plug in a cartridge. Now this cartridge is a bit of a crap cartridge, but cartridges generally tend to skip kernel and things like that. So I'm going to turn that on. And I've got some garbage on the screen there as well. Let me just show you that. So that's the screen that I get for that. So there is still some more problems. Hmm. I think another one of these RAM chips might be faulty. So what I'm going to do is I know that those first 
two aren't faulty. Well, I'm kind of hoping those first two aren't faulty. <laughs> I'm going to run exactly the same thing again. just that one faulty RAM chip then. So we have one faulty RAM chip and what I'm going to do is the, the machine can run without the CIAs in. Um, so I am going to actually remove the CIAs and see what we end up with. Um, just making sure that none of that's shorting out is it? No. We, we good. Right. So I'm going to pull out these then. These are the CIAs. And I'm going to see whether the machine will actually do anything different without them in. So I'll take one out first. So this is the one on the left. I'm going to power on. Okay, still got the same problem. I'm going to take out this one here. Cool. That was tight. Power on. Okay. Now, let me show you what just happened. Let's grab the camera here. Okay, now I want to show you what just happened when I turned it on. Watch this. Oh, it didn't do it. Ah, oh, there we go. Something going, and then it went to black screen. Right. So that's interesting. Right, so what we've done then is we've had a look at this. Uh, we've found that there was one faulty RAM chip, which was this one here. Okay. The machine now. If I, I can actually pull out the SID chip as well, let's just pull out the SID just confirm this is not a faulty SID chip. I swear I'm throwing shit everywhere. Turn it on. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we get the same thing without the SID chip in there as well. So it seems like it's okay. We've got a black screen with a border. Um, we found this faulty RAM chip here. We've removed the CIAs and the um, SID just to confirm that they're not doing anything wrong. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly replace this, the, the um, CIAs actually. We've gotta try and figure out what else is gonna be next. Um, so I'm gonna have a look through some of the schematics. Now, it's obvious that since the screen comes on, it doesn't appear to be timing issues. Um, sometimes this eight, some some people tell me this eight seven zero one goes, um, and I do. Although this this, I don't know because this is I don't know if this is responsible for outputting the clock. Maybe that's what's causing the slowness and what's causing it to go a little bit wonky. Right. So last ditch attempt. Then let's let's try the eight seven zero one, the Tolb, the T O L B. Well, make sure I've got a good grip on that because I don't want to. He says as it goes flying. Right. Okay. And it goes this way around. It might be possible that it is, again, a timing issue because it takes double the length of time that it should do to come on. Right. Let's power that on and see what happens. No, it's exactly the same. So it's not the TOLB um, or the, the 8701 that's gone. But I'm going to leave that in there anyway because 
why not? I've paid for it. <laughs> so yeah, we don't know what's wrong now. Uh, we do know that the RAM chip there was faulty and we've now fixed that, so that's excellent. But now I've got to try and find out what else is wrong with the board. There is something else that's causing it to take twice the length of time to load up and it's outputting double. Now hopefully it's not one of these three chips. That would be really annoying um, because these are quite pricey. These are quite pricey as well to replace. <laughs> if everything's pricey to replace on a Commodore 64. But yes, it seems a bit ominous. So I'm going to have to end the video there. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you liked it, please hit the like button. Please feel free to subscribe as well. Um, the more help that we can get, uh, the better. We're currently approaching 10,000 views, which means we can start running ads on the channel and get some money in. Uh, that would keep me in part. So just watch without an ad blocker. That'll help us out. Um, or you can send us a tip on PayPal me or Patreon. Uh, you know what to do anyway. You know, you, you watch YouTube quite a lot, I'm sure. But thank you very much for watching this video. Until the next time, until the next one, we're going to try and figure out what's wrong with this so I can start playing games. Catch you later. Bye-bye. I had a cold and now all of my top lip is dry and cracked. That's probably why you hear me going quite a lot. It's annoying. <laughs>